Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be testing the top five keyboards under $30, and they're all mechanical. Yeah, mechanical keyboards, and none of these claim to be waterproof this time. But first, before we dive into this, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys, and more specifically, Windows 10 licenses. And if you're interested, use the link down below and buy the Windows 10 Pro activation using our code TB20 to get 20% off. All you have to do to activate your Windows 10 license is buy the key by using code TB20 and then throw the Windows 10 key into your Windows 10 activation on the system you wish to install it in and boom, you have activated Windows 10 and you no longer have to look at that horrible watermark in the bottom right corner. So thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring this video. Let's get right into the video, shall we? All right, guys, you all absolutely loved that video that we did recently where we did the top five keyboards under $20 and there was one keyboard that was under 20 bucks that was mechanical, but then the price went up and it was kind of a weird situation. But I'm glad you all watched that video and gave us some feedback because we're gonna do a way better version of this by basically doing top five under $30 and these are all definitely mechanical and they all definitely should be available. So if you wanna purchase any of these keyboards in the video, links in the description down below, they are affiliate links and they will help support us um, if you like what we do. So if you guys check out what we have going on on our table over there, you'll notice we have one through five, one being amazing, three being, you know, decent middle ground, and five being meh, or just kind of the worst one. I don't think we're gonna find any that we absolutely like hate, but we are gonna rate them in order of all kinds of different stipulations. We have everything from build quality to aesthetics, to just how the keyboard works and pricing. We even have a scale here to weigh like, the caps and the keyboard and everything. We're gonna do all kinds of tests. You guys are gonna really like this one. We're gonna make it uniform this time, hopefully. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, we're going to start with this beautiful one right here. So, Jackson, do you want to uh, first uh, get first impressions here? My favorite part about this box is that it's it's literally a, a sticky piece of paper to put over the box. I mean, props to them for putting something on it. So this keyboard here is the Eagle Tech Mechanical Keyboard, and it's 104 key, so it does have the number pad, um, which Matt and I are not a huge fan of, but we're not going to really rate a keyboard based on if it has a number pad or not because some people really like that and we can't we can't diss that you know because that's not fair it says it has a breathing backlit effect i don't know if it has anything else it just says blue backlit with brightness adjustments and on off 100 percent anti-ghosting that's really awesome custom mechanical switches designed for longevity and greater durability and responsiveness and they're actually supposedly double shot injection keycaps which that's pretty cool for a, a keyboard this cheap so let's go ahead and just open the box up because i think we've already done all the outside stuff we can so this Eagle Tech keyboard was $28.89 at the time of purchase. Of course, these are subject to change, but we assume that it'll probably stay around that price because this is no crazy high-end keyboard. But so right off the bat, this keyboard is actually a pretty nice, like hefty feeling keyboard. So the top of this does feel like it's either aluminum or some type of steel. And the reason I say that is because if you look right here, this piece is bent and plastic usually would not do that unless it's been bent for a long time. You see how this one's like not really that bent. This one's like really bent. Um, so that is one little, uh, one little small defect off the back, but it is cool though that um, this keyboard seems to have a metal top. Of course, the rest of the um, casing is just like an ABS plastic. It does have uh, two little feet on the back. Um, the keycaps actually feel pretty nice for their double shot injection. Let's go ahead and pop one off. So before we weigh it, we're also gonna check and see, does the keyboard flex? And yes, it does a little bit. Like, I don't know if we can see this. If I bend it really hard, it does flex a little bit. This metal top though kind of does hold it down and keep it from flexing. Um, let's go ahead and see what we have weight wise. So we're gonna check with grams real quick. And if it's like a stupid number, we'll put it over to pounds. 970 grams, let's switch that over to pounds. So that's two pounds um, and 2.5 ounces. So that's a pretty respectable weight for a cheap keyboard like this. A lot of you guys like really heavy keyboards so they don't move around on you, plus they just, they feel nicer. As far as the switch goes, it looks like we have basically a, a blue knockoff. It's kind of like a, a kale boxed uh, blue switch. I'm not really sure what actual brand it is. I'm sure it's a knockoff switch though. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get to the, the fun part. We're gonna actually plug this keyboard in. All right, so we have these really nice looking blue light. It actually is pretty bright. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it looks pretty good. Um, let's see if we can actually change any of this. Yeah, so going through the modes here, it is gonna all be blue, but it does have like all the basic modes that um, an RGB keyboard would have. It, but it's not RGB, it's just blue. But I mean, it's still cool though. For a little over $28, you have a keyboard that can do, you know, oh, that's cool, gaming mode and everything. So, I mean, honestly, 
This is actually pretty nice. It's not RGB. Some people don't like RGB though. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty good. So the cable is actually a really thick USB cable. It's actually thicker than most of them I see. There's no pass through or anything. So they just decided to use a pretty thick cable. It's not braided, but it does come with a Velcro strap uh, for cable management. Really nice thick USB uh, port over here. So um, the cable I would say is pretty decent. It looks like it's about a six or seven foot cable. All right, so for the, so for the typing test, we've clipped the lab and we'll do this for every single one onto the actual keyboard cable so that we hopefully have like a decent distance here, but let's go ahead and start typing. up stuff. All right, so there's your typing test. Hopefully it sounded decent enough. Definitely a lot of springy noise, definitely a lot of uh, bottoming out noises, but now let's go ahead and put it on our rating system over here. So this first one, just because we have nothing else to compare it to yet, um, I think we're going to go ahead and just put it in the middle for decent. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what the other one's going to be like, but this one has actually kind of impressed me as far as uh, build quality and everything goes. I guess we'll just put it like that. <laughs> Sure, we'll find a better way to do this, but this one is under the category of three. On to the next one. Your next keyboard. I don't oh, even God. know what it is. I got this beauty. <laughs> so this, ladies and gentlemen, is, well, I, if, I've opened these before, so sorry, I cheated. Uh, but this right here is the $22 special, the Haidong mechanical keyboard. <laughs> so this, ladies and gentlemen, came at 22 bucks. And you know, in the last video, we had a keyboard that was like under $20, that was fully mechanical, it was really weird. This is kind of the same thing. I don't know how long this is actually gonna stay at $22. It may go up, but it actually comes with a lot of weird things. Now, into the unboxing, it's basically a full-size keyboard. Jack wants to zoom in on this. We have more switches, which there are only one, two, three, four, five of them, uh, blue switches, which are kind of weird, but considering the keyboard doesn't have blue switches, they're supposed to be black switches, which is like a linear switch. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and unbox this real quick. Um, and we'll get some first impressions on the build quality. We have the keyboard right here. We're gonna go ahead and talk about the case material. It is actually just plastic. Um, it's a hard plastic though. And in terms of flexibility, we can do some flex right here. It takes a lot to really get it to flex. I mean, it will flex, look at it right there. Um, but I mean, in terms of like build quality, it feels pretty rigid. Um, the back is entirely plastic as well. It has this like textured plastic back with two flip out feet, which do look much sturdier than the other keyboard we just looked at. So that is a good plus if you're interested in that. Um, we'll talk more about the cable later, but I'm actually kind of impressed with the cable right now. So what we're gonna do next is see exactly how much this thing weighs. We should still be on pounds. So we'll go ahead and drop this down real quick. It's calibrated. I can't even tell it is. Yeah. A lot lighter. So that's one pound, 14 ounces. The other one was 2.5. So the aluminum on that made that keyboard probably heavier. Considering this is all plastic and a lot more hollow, you know, it's uh, decent. But the build quality, can't complain. It does not feel uh, like it's super, super cheap. So and we're going to go ahead and pop up a key cap here real quick. We'll just take this arrow key up. And then there it is. There is that black switch we talked about. Um, it basically is a linear switch. We'll get a quick little test real quick. You're probably not going to hear it that well right now, but in the typing test, you'll hear it more. It's smooth, feels like a heavy linear switch, um, like a heavy red switch. I don't know if that's a good thing because linear switch is supposed to be like really easy to push and have that fast responsiveness. Um, but I mean, it feels decent. Now these are supposed to be hot swappable because it came with this switch remover tool, which I've done this numerous times. It is quite difficult. I'm assuming it's hot swappable, but I could be totally wrong. It breaks, it breaks, oh, right? There we go. Um, wow. Yeah, that's hot swappable. So. Um, it wasn't soldered in, so that's a good thing, I guess. So if we really wanted to, we could just pop one of these blue switches in, which makes no sense whatsoever, but maybe. It feels wrong, but okay, there we go. We'll see if that still works after we put it back together, but hey, we should really confuse somebody and leave a blue switch right there. Um, but yeah, blue switch, oh, that goes this way. <laughs> just really confuse somebody if you want to. But I mean, the black switches are different. Normally with budget mechanical keyboards, you just see blue switches all the time. And that's really cool to see something different. Now, of course, what we gotta do is plug this thing up and see what it looks like. I have no idea. I think this actually is supposed to come with RGB backlighting. So this could be the only one that actually has that. We actually have some keyboards in this lineup that have no lighting at all. So we're gonna be interested to see what this looks like when we turn it on. But it looks like we have Dude, those were definitely RGB lights in there, I think. Yeah, so it's on white right now. Let's see Maybe. if there's a different mode. Um, mode one, two, three. Mode one, mode two, <laughs> mode three. Interesting. I mean, that's like this. I don't know how well it picks up on camera. It's not super bright, um, but it has like a white fade effect. I have yet to. Oh. That looks like. Is it moving? I can't tell. 
Yes, it is. It's actually techni- changing. Yeah, that, I mean, that's technically it's RGB. very oddly. It's very dim. Incredibly dim. I don't know how I feel about that. So let's see if there's any other modes. There's like a little like starry night effect. Mode 8 is another wave. So, I mean, it has modes, but... I mean, it's not anything crazy. You're not gonna wanna get this for the RGB. It's not absolutely insane to where it's a major selling point. Um, now to go into the cable, we have a braided cable, which is really cool actually. Um, this cable is well braided. It'll be a little bit more durable than some other cables. And also the one thing I like to point out is it has routing on the back. So you can route your cable one direction if you have like your uh, computer on one side, um, just keep things a little bit nicer with cable management. So that's actually really cool. So um, last thing right now would be just to Put this thing up in Word and see how it types. Okay, so where this ranks on our scale of one to meh, uh, we're probably gonna put this at number one right now because, well, it is definitely better than this one right now, and it comes in at $22. Price is a big selling point for a keyboard, and, well, um, at 22 bucks, if it's still 22 bucks, it is definitely right now our number one option, but we still got three more keyboards to see if it can dethrone the high dong. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. What's next on the list? We got a keyboard from our friends over at Gigabyte. Ooh, yeah, so we didn't even know Gigabyte like made keyboards, honestly. Um, so this is the Gigabyte Force uh, K81. It also has a number pad. It does look to be you know, a full keyboard, but it, it does look like it's a little bit smaller, which is kind of weird. Like the picture just makes it look small. Um, as far as the box, it says it has gaming red switches, which I'm assuming are like uh, Automy or something like that, just reds. I mean, they look very basic. They're definitely not cherries, but it says that they're 70 million key uh, press lifespan. They're, they're wear resistant keycaps because the keycaps are laser etched to ensure the keys are not easily worn out from pro prolonged use. And it also has also the 100% anti-ghosting. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. So this one does come in at $29.99. So this is like one of the, you could call it the, the top budget ones. You know, it's right at the edge of 30. Um, so let's go ahead and get it out of the box here. This one's actually really heavy. I think this is gonna be the heaviest one yet. Um, now, and I was totally wrong about this one being small. This one's like actually pretty long. Has very large lettering, I feel like. It's a little bit bigger than normal, which for some people they might really like. I mean, I don't mind it. These definitely do feel like reds, but they feel a little bit heavier than reds. Like, they feel like reds, but those are definitely harder to press than a regular red. It's almost like, like they're non-lubed reds, if that makes sense. Like, they're just not, they're not super smooth, but they sound good. I mean, they're, they're actually really reasonable. The uh, plate on top of the keyboard, I wish we had a better way to tell, but I think it's just plastic. Um, and there has to be weights in this or something. Cause I mean, like feel this, this is heavy. Dear God. Like it's that's actually, boy. I think this is going to be three or four pounds, which is what a lot of people look for um, in a keyboard. You know, we have uh, actual rubber feet on the bottom. They're, you know, anti-slick and everything, which is really nice. And the back of it, you know, is also plastic. I mean, the sides, everything's basically plastic on it. As far as flex goes, this thing has like almost none. I mean, it has a little bit, but just like the other ones that we've done so far, barely any flex. Um, actually popping off a keycap, we have these really goofy looking um, red switches. They actually don't have like a, a clear casing. They're just like a black plastic casing. So reading the actual switch, these are actually kale switches. Um, so that's, that's actually, you know, cool that we have an actual name brand switch on here and see if we can actually get this back on. All right, so now it's time to do the actual weight test. So let's go ahead and set this bad boy on. 2.5. 2.5, wow, I said like three or four. Okay, so this one uh, being 2.5 is actually the same weight as number three on the list. So as far as weight goes, we're actually kind of tied on that one. As far as pricing goes, this one is like a, a dollar more. So I mean, you know, that's, that, that's something. So as far as lights and design go, this one does not have any lights. This is one of the ones that is not RGB, no LEDs or anything. So for some of you, that might be like an instant turnoff. Um, for us, I mean, I, I would say I do like a keyboard with lighting, but I'm not gonna solely, you know, diss this keyboard just because it doesn't have lights. Some people hate lighting, you know what I mean? So. They'd rather spend money on a nice keyboard. This one does have, you know, decent like name brand switches and everything. So uh, that's really good. But I mean, you know, once we actually get this thing in, the responsiveness is really good. I mean, it's also probably been pretty good with the other ones as well. And then lastly, before we do the typing test, the cable is once again, like the first one that we did. It's just, um, you know, non-braided and everything, but decent thickness and everything. It's pretty stiff and you don't have to worry about, like it doesn't feel like it's gonna break instantly. So that's good. All right, here we go.
All right, guys, so now that we've, uh, you know, gone through and typed, I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm gonna have to think about this. This one does actually have, you know, good red switches, which I like, so. I'm, I'm thinking number two for now, honestly. You're thinking number two? Yeah. I was thinking either two or three. We can always move keyboards as well. I think in terms of the keyboard overall, yeah, but if somebody, like, it could be tied because someone that's, who really likes backlights. So. I'm thinking maybe, well, let's go ahead and put it on two, but we might end up moving both of these down if we have a better number two. So right now, guys, the high dong, the good old high dong is number one with the Gigabyte keyboard in second and the Eagle Tech with third. We have two more to go. Let's see if this thing changes up at all. Next. What do we have next? Oh, yes, this one, Red Dragon. We the like company. these guys. Yeah, we've worked with these guys before. So this, just so you know, has no lighting as well. They made sure to know this. I'm assuming they're reusing the same box just for quality purposes because there is a version with uh, backlighting. But so some of the features that it does mention as it, this, this is actually, you know what? Never mind. This box does not make any sense because it does say it has LED backlighting, but this version is no light. No light whatsoever. Um, so, you know, we're just gonna ignore that. But basically what it is, it's actually a 10 keyless keyboard. So that's the first keyboard that we've had this uh, thus far that has uh, no number pads. So that could be a selling point or a turnoff for some people. So keep that in mind as I open up this keyboard. It does come in at $28.99 for the price point, um, which is again below $30, but um, is creeping towards the top of that $30 price bracket. Again, we have that high dong at $22.99, which if it's still $22.99 is actually a good buy. So as we open it up here, you are greeted with a white keyboard. Yes, this is an all white keyboard, which is totally different from the rest of them. Um, and actually it looks quite nice. Um, we'll open it up right here and have a look at it. Now, I can kind of give it props for having an all white keyboard because it's different and not having backlight. I mean, it's not the end of the world because it's an all white keyboard. The finish looks pretty nice. It doesn't look super cheap like some all white finishes on like computer cases and things we've seen recently. It looks pretty good. So in terms of flex, this thing is solid. Like, oh my goodness, this thing is like really solid. I wouldn't even worry about build quality with this thing. You could probably kill somebody with it if you really wanted to. Um, if you flip it around to the back, we do have two flip out feet, which if I can get underneath them, are pretty solid. Um, two flip out feet, always good. No cable routing though, which is kind of a boo. But um, in terms of keycaps, we'll go ahead and take a keycap off somewhere. We'll take the I like how they put WASD on the keycaps for the uh, arrow keys, interesting. Um, we have uh, pretty decent keycaps, doesn't look, they might be double shot, they don't really advertise what the specific keycap is. And then in terms of switches, these do have Automu blue switches, which we care more in the typing test later, but we have seen these before in other keyboards. Automu is a pretty popular like uh, key switch maker for like these cheap mechanical keyboards. So they're actually pretty decent switches if you like blue switches. But again, it's very popular amongst these budget mechanical keyboards companies to just throw blue switches because they normally think it's the most popular because that's what the average consumer likes, the clicky clicky. Now we're going to weigh this thing. I'm thinking this thing is not gonna be nearly as hefty as the other ones because it's a 10 keyless, but we got one pound, 12 ounces. Not too bad, not too bad for a keyboard like this, but again, it's 10 kilos, it's literally missing like a majority of the keyboard. So now that we have this all put together, we do have to mention again that this does not come with backlighting. So we're gonna move it over here, plug her up, and you're not gonna see any backlighting. So just keep that in mind, or we could be totally surprised and lied to, and there could be backlighting, so we'll see. There you go, the keyboard is plugged Whoa, in again. No backlighting. No backlighting, whoa. Um, but I mean, it looks fine. It's a nice looking keyboard. Um, in terms of the cable, which we'll look at on first impressions, it's well, kind of plain Jane, nothing too special about it. It's an all white, uh, non-braided cable. Perfectly fine. The cable routing is kind of a eh, in my opinion. Really nice to see cable routing on like keyboards. Okay, so quick typing test. Sounds like any blue switch keyboard. Um, can't really say much else about it. This keyboard is gonna be kind of limited by a couple things. One, it is not hot swappable, so you're stuck with those blue switches. It comes in at $28. So if you really want blue switches, this could be the keyboard for you. If you really want 10 keyless, this could be the keyboard for you. Uh, but in terms of ranking, it's gonna be kind of hard because it's very niche. You gotta really want a white keyboard. You gotta really want blue switches to want this keyboard. So in terms of an overall selection, I don't know, man. I think it probably ranks, I'm leaning either three or four. I don't know if this is technically better than this one without the backlighting, um, but I'm gonna put it at four. It is a really well-built keyboard. We might do some moving around at the end. This is definitely a cheaper built keyboard, but it does come with backlighting. So if that's a selling point for you, go for it. But there are a lot of people who really like 10 keyless. So this could be three, if not one for some people. So for now, don't get mad at us. We're gonna put this at four 
and we will adjust as needed after looking at the final keyboard, but I feel pretty confident with the selection right now. So I got a little bit of a surprise here. This one comes with a mouse. Hello, thanks for choosing Habit. So this is a very familiar brand. This is actually one of the first companies to like ever help us out and like send us products or anything, um, which this, we, we paid for this one, but uh, we, we have not worked with them in a long time, but it's, it's made in China. But Habit's actually a really popular seller on Amazon. They've actually been around for like a really long time now. I mean, I remember seeing them back in like 2014. So they've definitely been in the game for a while. The box really says like nothing besides here because I'm assuming they use the same box for um, a lot of different products and keyboards, but so this one is $29.99, so keep that in mind. But you're also getting a mouse with it, which honestly I think is a, like a huge selling point for a lot of people. Um, this isn't really the, the greatest, you know, like comparison since this one does have a mouse with it, because really you could look at it like maybe the keyboard's only worth $24 since you're getting a whole freaking mouse with it. So. I guess we'll go ahead and pull out the mouse just so you guys can see it, but obviously we're not gonna stress much about the mouse. We will plug it in so you can just see what it looks like, you know, in case you wanna go this route right now. My dog is sweating hardcore over there, guys. <laughs> All right, so yeah, here's the mouse. Uh, before we get into everything, I'm just gonna show you guys the mouse. This mouse does have lighting on it. Keep that in mind too. We'll plug it in to show you, but let's go ahead and just talk about the main focus here, the keyboard. All right, so uh, straight out of the box, this is a full-size keyboard. Once again, we have the number pad. Um, pretty decent weight. I kind of like the chrome stripping around it. Now this one is all plastic. We have plastic on the front, back, uh, side to side. And I, I mean, overall though, the keyboard feels good. I'm gonna guess it's probably gonna weigh exactly two pounds. Let's go ahead and take off the usual. So these switches actually say content on them. I don't know if maybe that's their own branding. It could be, I mean, Habit's a pretty decent and big brand. So these are blue switches, obviously. They're not cherries or anything. They, they just say content. So not really exactly sure what they are, but they're, they're blue switches. They kind of sound the same as any other blue switch. Yeah, they sound like a little bit of a quieter blue switch. They don't have that really nasty bottom out. I don't know if you noticed that, Matt. Mm -hmm. They don't have that nasty, like where it, when it hits it, where it like smacks hard. Yeah. yeah. So this one obviously, as far as we know, is not hot swappable as well. It doesn't appear that it is, but it could be. Um, doesn't say it is though, so we're gonna assume it's not. They don't advertise it in eight. So we're gonna go ahead and do the, the weight here. All right, Matt, if you wanna read off what we got. Okay, so it's 1.10 ounces, so we're a little bit under uh, two pounds. So, you know, it's respectable though. It's definitely not one of the heavier ones, but it's, it's close. As far as flexibility goes, this one I think might actually be the most flexible keyboard so far. I can actually, kind of bend this one because it is all plastic and it doesn't have like a, a recessed plastic to it to make it more rigid, but it's not like to the point that, I mean, I'm, I'm really struggling to bend it. It's not gonna like break the keyboard in half or anything. So let's go ahead and go over here though and plug the keyboard in and uh, see what we got. All right, so to go through some of the oh. RGB modes, um, it actually does have, I don't, I don't it's know waving. It's, it's waving at us. This just looks like it's just a standard like RGB. It doesn't change or anything. Oh, okay. So this one's actually like a, a you know, pulse mode, wherever you type, it kind of sends out a wave. Um, snake mode. <laughs> this is kind of just pulsating on and off RGB. It's not very bright. It's definitely not like RGB RGB. It's basically like certain keys or certain colors. It does not appear that it really changes. And then I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we have like a, like a snowflake effect where it's kind of falling. Do you actually have a braided cable, which is nice. Uh, a lot of people, you know, prefer having a braided cable. It's not anything insane. You know, it's still a decently thick cable with, with braiding. So we got that going for it too. There's no cable routing or anything like that, of course. So let's go and do a quick typing test. All right, so and before we go out, we're gonna go ahead and just see what the mouse looks like. It's actually a smooth RGB effect. I don't know if it can, oh, it can be changed. Look at that. That's pretty That's safe. actually pretty good. So, I mean, honestly, I almost value the keyboard as being like a 22 to $23 keyboard and this being like, I mean, we did a mouse video where it was all, they were under $10, right? I mean, this is as good, if not better, as most of the mice we reviewed that were under $10. So, for this coming in at $30 right now, I'm gonna be honest, like, this is probably the best deal, but the Haidong one has hot swappable switches. Um, it comes with some extra mechanical switches. Honestly, just the fact that it's hot swappable, the cheapest like hot swappable keyboard you can really build yourself is gonna be using probably a $30 uh, PCB. And that's just for the PCB. So 
I'm going to say that we're going to knock the gigabyte one back, put this at number two with the mouse. We'll kind of put that in the picture here in just a second. I don't think the Red Dragon deserves five, in my opinion, but it's hard. So we're making a very tough decision right now, guys. We're thinking about moving this kind of like a uh, little bit no-name keyboard to the very end. Um, the reason being is because for one, the build quality is, it's nice that this one is actually metal. It's like the only one that had a metal top, but that also leaves imperfections, especially like where you can bend stuff. And I can't even bend it back with my finger. Um, but we're actually thinking we're gonna put this at number five. Now keep in mind though, don't take these tests to heart. This is like our personal preference. Really, we're trying to keep like an open mind here, but Red Dragon's a really good brand and, and we trust it. You know what I mean? This is a trusted keyboard. So we would feel wrong putting this at the end. You know what I mean? And for some of you, this keyboard would be number one and you know, this one would be the last. So it's kind of just preference. This is what we think. So, you know, let us know in the comment section down below what you guys think. What was your favorite keyboard? And if you guys want to buy these keyboards, once again, links in the description down below. They are all pretty decent options. And based on our reviews, hopefully you can choose a good one that works for you. And let us know if there's any other good ones that we missed because there was a lot of selection on Amazon. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. The high dong coming in hot. Woo!